Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here, and today in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can convert these sketches into these photorealistic renders and stylized renders using D5 Render's new AI tool, right? So as you can see, this tool, uh, you know, you do get quite a few different styles from it, and this is um, done by D5 Render's uh, new software, which is called D5 High or D5 HI. Uh, for those of you that don't know who D5 Render is, uh, they're probably one of the top render engines that people use right now. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of them, but in case you don't, the stuff is available in a lot of different software and they're probably up there in terms of Twinmotion, Enscape, Lumion, and I guess T5 renders there as well, right? So in order to use this tool, what you do need to do is sign up. So you do need to join a waiting list. If you are a D5 Pro member, I do believe you have a higher priority in terms of joining at a quicker rate. If not, you can still join the waitlist. It might just take a bit longer to get approved. However, when you do get approved, you will have access to this Discord here. And in their Discord, they do have a D5 High section. And as you can see, they've got an introduction here where they'll explain the tool to you, which I'll also do in this video. But they've also got stuff like user so showcases, uh, galleries, and like, I guess, a chat support, right? So before we get into this video, I just want to say, if you guys do enjoy the video, I would very much appreciate if you can leave a like, and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are looking at our first example, and I'm just going to explain the UI a bit, right? So here you can choose if you want it to focus more on architecture or generic categories. I'm obviously going to do architecture, and right now the only option available is facade styling, right? So obviously, as you guys know, when it comes to stable diffusion, you are going to have to describe your scene a bit in order to help the AI engine, right? So I'm going to look at an example that we've uh, used before, and it's this interior sketch of this modern apartment where it's got this luxury leather sofa, I guess, a window, curtains, a chair, and I'm going to say it's got a timber floor, all right? So first thing you want to do is if you actually want to input an image is you want to expand image reference and you want to put this image in terms of structure, right? So this is the structure of the image and what you want your geometry to be. You then have to describe your uh, scene and the more descriptive you are, the more it helps AI. So here I've said it's a modern living room with white ceiling and walls, sunlight coming from the windows, timber floors and a luxury leather sofa. Over here, as you can see, we have a few advanced options just to see how much we want AI to be creative or more accurate to our input that we've uploaded number of outputs that we want to do. I'm going to do three just because, you know, I prefer, you know, uh, make it less resource intensive for the computer. And now diagram style, I'm going to show you that in a bit. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit generate. Okay. And one thing I want to let you guys know that while this is generating is I have tried to record this video a few times, but D5 High has been going uh, up and down in terms of its service. Um, I believe this is something they have fixed now. However, if you are having uh, issues, join their Discord and let them know there, right? But hopefully it is fixed now. As you can see, it says we're waiting in line. Okay, so here's our first images generated. If I'm being honest right off the bat, this is probably the best one. However, in terms of the timber floors, it didn't actually get it there. I mean, if I click on it, okay, it, is actually, it has actually got timber floors, but they're not um, that dark. Uh, and you can compare it to the original, of course. So you have your before and after. If you really like an image, you can make it HD, so you uh, download it in high quality. And if you prefer what an image has given you and you want to use that to create more image variations, you just click on this image variation tool, right? But overall, I'm going to generate this again. And what I'm going to say is I don't want it to say, you know, with white. I'm just going to say white ceiling. Okay. And if I don't want my walls to be white and I want to have another color, what you can do is you can do a negative font, right? So here, you're describing what you want to have in your scene, and here you're describing what you want to, to actually take away from your scene. So this can either be specific colors or elements. So here, I'm gonna say white wall, and I'm gonna say white rug, okay? So hopefully I don't see a white wall and a white rug in my next uh, image generated. And if you are finding a bit of, um, you know, if you are finding a hard time having inspiration in terms of what you wanna write here, they've actually included something known as a prompt lexicon. So if you click on it, you can see it's got a few words here to help you make your scene a bit better. Uh, I think this is quite useful, especially since stable diffusion and AI can get quite word soupy. So over here, maybe I want something like a uh, futuristic concept style. Uh, and maybe, I mean, you can do stuff like the cyberpunk, art deco. I mean, let's just leave that for now. I've added a few. Let's hit generate and see what we get now. Okay, so here we are with the new images that we generated. I'd say this one. It didn't follow our negative prompt as I expect, unless you can't count that white wall as gray. I don't know. Uh, that's up to you guys. I mean, overall, it's a bit better. However, this one is probably our closest one because we don't really have a main uh, wall in terms of, you know, as a white color. Uh, it's obviously made of timber. I didn't even specify timber wall, but you can see it's followed that. We don't have a white rug anymore. And as you can see, I mean, it is following our prompt pretty well. Obviously, you can choose a few different models here. So if I go here 
And let's say if I didn't want to be photorealistic, right? Say if I wanted to actually mainly focus on like geometry that's uh, trained on Zaha Hadid images, or maybe if I wanted to produce something that's a bit more of a graphical output, I can click on these stylized models and then I say use this model as you can see here. And now once that's selected, you can generate it and then we can see what else you want to get, okay? Equally so, they've got something known as a diagram style. So if you want your in, your image to be basically, I don't know, if you want it to be mainly look like either an anime, either a cyberpunk style or even a cartoon style, or maybe a specific ArcViz artist style that you like and you've got a reference image, it will use that and try and produce it in the same style, right? So over here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna make it have a watercolor image here, right? That I'm gonna do as an input. Let's just see how it goes. So this, I want my image to actually be on the style. So here, I'm gonna drag that into diagram style, and now let's see what we get, okay? And obviously you can choose in terms of guidance style between image uh, for the structure and how much you want to follow the style and this model, but I'm gonna leave everything as it is for now, and let's see what we get when I hit generate, okay? I mean, look at this. I think this has nailed it, especially in terms of the style, right? So here I took the style, and I obviously changed the model that it was used on to make it a bit more illustrative, but even though it has gotten rid of the wall in the background, right, you can probably understand why AI has uh, fixed that well gotten rid of that and it's swapped this window for a building i mean if you did retweak if you did uh, regenerate it or probably tweak it a bit more you're probably going to get a really nice example from it but i am very surprised with how well it's actually conveyed the style right and you can see how easy to use this user interface is and that's definitely one of the best things about this tool okay so for the next image that i'm going to use is actually taken from a person that i follow on twitter his name's Kanoko. I've asked him to take uh, to use one of his sketches in my video. I really like the style that he has on his sketches. As you can see, uh, they are literally sketches that's done in a, a sketchbook. So I guess this is a perfect thing to try, right? So here, I'm just going to go to one of the images that I'm using here. And I guess this image here is kind of this uh, precast concrete frame. And then it's obviously got some vegetation. It's like an inside of a shopping mall. Let's see what we can get with AI in terms of this example, right? So over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste my description that I've already used. It's a modern shopping mall, concrete facade, large circular glazing, curtain walls on ground floor, vegetation, sunny weather. Over here, for the image reference, I'm going to upload the sketch here. And I'm not actually gonna give it a diagram style, and I'm just gonna use the normal model here. And I guess for guidance scale, I'm gonna push guidance scale, I'm gonna push it to 0 0.8. And let's do number of outputs being three, okay? So if we hit generate for this example, let's see what we get here. Okay, so as we can see, we do get some decent uh, stuff, right? So here you can see it's like filled in some things for us. It's probably squared off this building. So if I went into uh, creativity and I made it more accurate, we'll see what we get. But over here, it's added a hedge there, just randomly. But in terms of a concrete frame, I think it's nailed it. You know, it's got the circular glazing there. Here it is following the kind of shape that I've given in terms of the precast panel sometimes. You know, it's varying between them. But overall, I think it's okay. Generating, 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 generating. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this does look really cool. I mean, this looks like some really nice artwork, okay? Even though it isn't like, I mean, it is realistic. I did give it like a very colorful image. So as you can see, if I go style frames again, for my, uh, this was the actual reference image that I was using, but wow, okay. I mean, it does follow the geometry very well, but in terms of the art style, it's kind of got the, it's definitely got the colors. I guess it was kind of hard for it to assign, you know, what to stick where. Uh, it could basically only take the colors. But if I go here, if I go to the model style, let's go to illustration and hit, uh, no, let's go to this one, okay? I'm gonna hit use here. Uh, I believe that's the best one to use. So if I go here, I'm gonna close it, and I hit generate again. Let's see what we get this time. This has intrigued me. Okay, wow, so in terms of the style, I think these two are actually pretty cool, right? So it definitely did make it a bit more like an illustration or like an art piece, but I guess that's because we combined our model and our style. I mean, this one just looks like, yeah, that's just probably a weird glitch, but I'm actually very impressed with these two. And one thing I did want to show you guys, I was just uh, wary of time in this video. However, you know, one main reason that you can use this tool is because obviously D5 Render is a render engine that you probably, you're going to import like quite a developed model on, right? If you have a CAD view, like I've taken this from Revit, you can definitely use this with D5 High. I guess that's one uh, benefit of you having uh, D5 High and D5 Render both within like an actual software because, you know, they are a render engine and they are given like an early stage concept tool. So as you can see, this was a Revit uh, viewport that I've extracted. Give it a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of a prompt. And here you can see I've got these renders from it as well, right? So you wouldn't need to exactly model this entire scene in DeFi render, especially if you were just trying to convey a few ideas. And another good thing that I actually like about this tool is the fact of how the generation history works, right? So if you want to see previous stuff you've generated, you can go to generation history. 
and you can see the date you generated and the time and also you can see all the different outputs that you've generated right so as you can see these are all the stuff that i've done when i was testing the video and even through like personal exploration i think it's really cool that it actually lasts this long and your images are there you can also download them you can make them hd later on if you want or even use uh, prompts that you've done earlier to do uh, image variations i like the fact that it saves it this much and one really cool feature that i like about this right is that if you go to these images here if you click on it you can see that it saves the prompt that you use it actually saves the uh, image that you use in terms of the structure and it will tell you how much the guidance scale and that was right and you can even see the time that you've made it and you can even choose to remix it right so say if i go up here say if i like some of these images that i've generated here uh this one for example you can see it saved both my guidance scale and the no you can see it saved both the diagram style and the structure and i can click on it and there we go we can see exactly what i've used and say if i did want to use this for a prompt again right all i have to do is just hit on remix here and then look at that it's loaded it for me in terms of the structure and the guidance and even the number of outputs so i can hit generate and i can carry on from it right or i could click on Im image uh, variations before so yeah that's pretty much the summary of this tool let me know what you guys think Overall, I think the main strength of it is the fact that it has a really nice user interface. I think it's quite intuitive and I do like how responsive this diagram style is. Um, and, you know, the fact that the generation history is actually probably one of the best I've seen in terms of being at a usable state in case you want to iterate through your previous work. One thing I definitely think they need to improve is the actual stability of the server. Uh, hopefully, uh, like I said, they have worked on it. Hopefully it does stay up. While I was recording this video, it has been a bit wishy-washy. But hopefully that is fixed for you guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would very much appreciate it if you can leave a like. And that's it. Take care, guys. Cheers.